as we enter into this Yom Kippur with contemplative prayer and reflection, we listen to the beautiful music of Kol Nidre. Thank you. 
with this beautiful music still in our hearts, we turn to page 15 as we reflect on the importance and power of this day. Kol Nidre, a chant that begins in a whisper and rises to a cry, on this night of promises remembered, each soul in solitude communes with the soul of the universe. God, from this day of atonement to the next, may we reach it in peace. All Israel makes this vow to turn from wrong, dishonesty, and greed, to walk in the path of justice and right. Yet we know our weakness, how prone we are to fail. Help us to keep our word. Help us to act with humility and integrity. We seek pardon and forgiveness. We seek your radiance and light. Please rise as we open the ark. With one voice, assembled sages, past and present, declare, all may pray as one on this night of repentance. Let none be excluded from our community of prayer. With one voice, God and congregation proclaim, all may pray as one on this day of return. Let all who find a place in this sacred assembly.
shall be forgiven the entire community of Israel and the stranger who lives in their midst for all have gone astray in error. Moses prayed to God as you have been faithful to this people ever since Egypt please forgive their failings now in keeping with your boundless love. God responded, I forgive as you have asked. We continue with the Shehachianu.
We continue at the Bar Hu on page 22. Continue on page 24. Blessed are you, Adonai. Your great name fills the universe with majestic might. Your word creates twilight and dusk. As your wisdom opens the gates of night, your discernment separates the changing seasons and causes the passage of time. The stars arrayed across the sky reveal your design. You roll out the cycle of darkness and light, shaping day and night. You sweep away day and carry the world into nightfall, setting day apart from nighttime. You are God of all we can perceive and all that is beyond our perception. Living, eternal God, be our sovereign to the end of time. Baruch Alta Adonai HaMa'ariv Aravim. Blessed are you, Adonai, creator of twilight and dusk. We continue with the Shema on page 28. Shema Yisrael Adonai be seated. Ve'avta eit Adonai Elohecha v'chol levavcha u'v'chol nafshecha u'v'chol me'odecha v'hayu hadvarim ha'ele Asher anuchi mitzavecha hayom al levavecha veshinantam levanecha vidibarta bam beshivtecha bevetecha uvletecha vaderech uvshokbecha uvkuemecha. Ukshar tam leot al yadecha, vehain yule totafot, beine necha. Uktav tam al mezuzot betecha, uvisharecha. Lema antis keru, vaasitem et kol mitzvotai, vitem kedushim, lelo echem. Ani Adonai Elohim, Asher hotzeit yedchem me'eretz mitzrayim, niot lachem leLohim. Ani Adonai Elohim. We continue on the top of page forty. 
Witness to this, hero to this heroic might, the people thanked and praised God by name, freely accepting the reign of heaven. Then Moses and Miriam and all Israel sang to you this song of joy. As you are able, please rise in body and spirit as we turn to page 46 for the tefillah.
sovereign God are holy, your name is holy, seekers of holiness praise you day by day, Selah. Please be seated as we turn to page 63. Like smoke above the altar, may a memory of us ascend and come before you. As Israel once came to you with offerings from the flock, so we bring to you the offerings of our mouth, not lip service, but heartfelt prayer. So the prophet taught, Return, O Israel, to Adonai your God, for you have fallen because of your sin. Take words with you and return to Adonai. Accept the words we set before you, awkward and imperfect as they are, our hesitant questions, our corrosive doubts, Accept, too, our silences, our thoughts that rise in the stillness, our faith that coheres for a fragile instant, then dissipates like smoke above the altar. 
Continue on page 72. the sub subtle search for thanksgiving on the top of page 75. It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be just weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention. Then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but the doorway. The doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. We speak of shalom, of peace, on page 78. Shalom, Rav al Yisrael, Oh, 
From this place of peace, we now enter into silent reflection and prayers of the heart for the year that has just begun. With the hopes that we have come to synagogue on Yom Kippur, having already made our amends with others, we have an opportunity to join together in confession and communal confession several times throughout the holiday to feel a sense of wholeness, to feel right before God and as a community. We'll turn to page 82 together. When I was very young, I learned about this tradition of uh, striking our chest, they called it. It seemed like we were maybe punishing ourselves in a way, and maybe sometimes we want a little bit of that negative enforcement, if that's what we're feeling. Um, 
But a couple of years ago, I also learned another way of looking at this. Um, um, Eliana Light, who's a, who's a musician and an educator, uh, says that maybe when we tap our hearts, that's what she calls it, tapping our hearts, maybe in a way we're saying that we need to wake up, wake up our emotions, kind of get our bodies and our minds and our emotions all in sync so that we really live the lives we want to live in this new year. So if you want to follow that tradition with me as we tap our hearts, as we confess, um, you're welcome to do that. Page 82 will rise together as the cantor introduces the section for us. Eloheinu, 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 Tavo, Tavo lefanecha, Tefilateinu, Ve'al, Ve'al titalom, Mitrinate, God of all generations, may our prayers reach your presence. And when we turn to you, do not be indifferent. Adonai, we are arrogant and stubborn, claiming to be blameless and free of sin. In truth, we have stumbled and strayed. We have done wrong. Ashamnu, Ashamnu, Bagadnu, Bagadnu, Gazalnu, Gazalnu, Dibarnu Dofi, Dibarnu Dofi. Shanu, Shanu, Shichar. 
we are guilty, we betray, we steal, we scorn, we act perversely, we are cruel, we scheme, we are violent, we slander, we devise evil, we lie, we ridicule, we disobey, we abuse, we defy, we corrupt, we commit crimes, we are hostile, we are stubborn, we are immoral, we kill, we spoil, we go astray, we lead others astray. Page 88. Feel free to join me for each of these alchets. I'll say the words alchet shechatanu lefanecha and then continue in English. Alchet shechatanu lefanecha, the ways we have wronged you openly and secretly and harm we have caused in your world by losing self control. Alchet shechatanu lefanecha, the ways we have wronged you through sexual immorality and harm we have caused in your world through consumption of food and drink. Alchet shechatanu lefanecha, the ways we have wronged you by giving into our hostile impulses and the harm we have caused in your world through greed and exploitation. Alchet shechatanu lefanecha, the ways we have wronged you through cynicism and scorn, and harm we have caused in your world through arrogant behavior. Alchet shechatanu lefanecha, the ways we have wronged you by hating without cause, and harm we have caused in your world through offensive speech. Alchet shechatanu lefanecha, the ways we have wronged you with a slanderous tongue, and harm we have caused in your world through a selfish or petty spirit. For all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, lead us to atonement. Together in Hebrew. Turn to page 114 and call upon God as our parent, our source, and as our sovereign, Avinu Malkenu, special words that we use throughout these 10 days of repentance, these days of awe. Avinu Malkenu, Shema Koleinu. Avinu Malakeinu Ratanu Lefanecha Avinu Malakeinu
be seated as the ark is closed. There's a story about the Kotzker Rebbe. The Rebbe decides that he is going to spend Shabbat with a friend. And so he puts on regular street clothes for Shabbat. And because he is speaking at a nearby town, giving a very famous lecture, he has to board the plane as Shabbat is completed in order to arrive late at night. He doesn't change his clothes into the clothes that a Rebbe wears. He gets on the train and there are three students who are going to hear his lecture, but they don't recognize the Rebbe. They begin to make fun of this old man who is feeble and moving too slowly. They laugh at him, they joke at his expense, and they even try and trip him as he is walking slowly down the train car. They arrive at the town and they are excited to hear the Rebbe. And then the reality hits them before the train has arrived, the Rebbe has changed his clothes and begins to exit the train to a big fanfare of the community waiting for him. And they realize that they have been making fun of the Rebbe himself. Shocked, they, they begin apologizing profusely Oh my God, Rebbe, we didn't meet. Oh my goodness, we're so sorry. Oh my goodness, we feel so guilty. We are so sorry. We apologize. The Rebbe lets this go on for some time until he finally turns to these three students and says, you have apologized to the Rebbe, but now I want you to apologize to the old man on the train. Failed apologies seem to be all around us, don't they? We have a lot of people who have done wrong in the world, hurt people, really hurt people, and either have failed with an apology or haven't apologized at all. The Sackler family and the opiate epidemic, not taking responsibility for so many in our community made off. We have Harvey Weinstein. 
we have Cosby, we have Louis C.K., we have Mark Halpern, over and over and over again. There are people in our midst who do not apologize, and I believe it puts our world out of balance and desperately in trouble. It is truly this idea that Aaron Lazar talks about, who is the chancellor of the University of Massachusetts Medical School and has spent his entire career studying apologies. He wrote a book on apology. He says that you can apologize too soon, but that actually you can never apologize too late, meaning you should always apologize no matter how long ago the offense was. But too soon is a reality, Lazar says, because often when one apologizes too soon, it's to manipulate the situation. It's to keep the anger of those offended at bay. And most of all, the offender has not done the work, the important internal reckoning to understand what they have done. And without that point, really, your apology doesn't stand. You can, just can't quickly apologize for your behavior unless you really understand what has caused the offense. And that takes a lot of time. And guess what? That's what Yom Kippur is all about. We have a lot of time. Do you know that Kol Nidre is the longest service in the year? Why? Because we're doing that apology stuff to God. It takes a long time. I was listening to the radio and I couldn't believe, as I was thinking about apology and thinking about all these averas, these sins that have been all around us, these people who have offended and not had any apology, and there on the radio was a whole conversation about how to bring offenders back into this community around the Me Too movement. Tarana Burke, who coined the Me Too movement and was the head of it, really started it two years ago, understood in this interview that she is going to take care of the victims. We still need to hear the stories of the victims. We still are hearing new stories of the victims. Just this past Sunday in the New York Times, a new Harvey Weinstein story came forward. But that she said, our community and our society has to also work on what it is to reconcile to where we can bring together these broken realities in our world. And she says, it really is not going to go away, sexual violence, until we understand why the wrongdoers did what they did. And in addition for us to acknowledge that kind of giving them an entree back into society through the back door, through podcasts, through books written, that isn't going to help either because really forgiveness without an apology is cheap. We have to figure out how they are going to come back and do real tshuva, real atonement, do restitution because she believes that the people who were part of the problem are the exact people who have to be part of the solution. I loved that. I loved that. She understood that we as a community must reckon with the realities of reconstituting some understanding of how we treat one another. 
Lazar goes on to talk about the fact that not only can one apologize too soon, but we also have to understand the, the history of apology. That it actually was after World War II that apology or apologizing became a part of civilized society, not a reflection of weakness, but actually seen as a strength, which I think is a really wonderful thing. He also went on to say, what happens when you have to take responsibility for something you didn't do? That's, that's something that we've struggled with, isn't it? And he explains that it's sort of like buying a house. You own the house and you love many things about the house and you own the things that you love and you buy that house. But then you also own the hot water heater that bursts the day after you sign the papers. You own that part of the house too. He says we have to take responsibility we feel very proud of being part of this country, but we also feel the shame of this country being built on the back of slaves. We have to own both parts. I'm very proud to be part of this community and this congregation, and I feel honored to be the senior rabbi. And yet, over this year, you have received two letters about previous sexual misconduct from a youth leader in our community. And I feel ashamed of that. And I feel responsible for that. I have to take all of it. Abraham Joshua Heschel said about World War II, that there were few who were guilty, but all were responsible. Few who were guilty, but all are responsible. I think that is very much what it means to be a part of this community and understand that apology is part of this wider world. In this American life, there was an amazing story you have to watch it because I'm not going to do it total justice. But there was an apology that the victim actually tweeted was a master apology and healed a wound that was deep. Dan Harmon was a lead writer of a TV series, several TV series, and he was attracted to a young writer who was part of his team. He was the supervisor, he was the leader. And so he began by paying a lot of attention to her, telling her how creative she was, how amazing she was. He put her work first and foremost ahead of all the other writers who had been there for many years and created a jealousy in the group and a very uncomfortable situation. She kept telling him, don't show me favors, don't do this. And then he told her what he really felt and that he loved her. And she said, you're my boss. No. And then he decided to make her pay for his humiliation of being rejected. And he publicly humiliated her over and over again. Six years have gone and through a lot of different realities, Dan made a public apology. He said exactly what he did, word for word. He took responsibility. He said, I had these feelings and I knew they were dangerous, so I did what a coward does. I didn't deal with them and I made everybody else deal with them. He said, I didn't really respect women because I wouldn't treat somebody like that if I did, and I would never treat a man like that. She, Megan Gans was her name, heard it on the radio of his podcast and was touched and amazed. 
She felt that there was a reconciliation that she didn't think was possible. She felt freed and liberated. She said, I didn't realize hearing from him, ironically, the very person I would have never asked to tell me what happened was true. I needed that affirmation and confirmation. I needed him to recognize that he had actually hurt the very core of what I loved about myself, and that was a belief in my creativity. I didn't believe in it anymore. She told everyone to listen. And then Dan said something that I thought was very important. He said, you know, I think the world's going to be better because we, meaning men, won't get away with it anymore. And I think that's a good thing. The idea that we can actually ask for an apology or forgiveness or give it, much more important than being asked for it, that we put somebody else's concern and belief and hurt above our own, that is when we heal. There is the head of the Orthodox Youth Movement, David Beshelfkin, and he actually wrote this incredible book called Synagogue, S-I-N-A-G-O-G-U-E. And he talks about a Hasidic group who understands that when we sin and ask for forgiveness and do the apology, that we're actually elevated to a higher status than just enjoying life in the perfect world. He said that actually the idea of coming to terms with our faults is the way we create a repaired world, a tikkun olam. He says that the people who show a complicated family history to their children and grandchildren, not only talking about the successes, but the time you failed the time you lost the job, the time you didn't do the right thing, you made the wrong decision, the time that your family history isn't so great, along with when it is great, actually creates a resilient next generation and a strong family. Personally, it's the same when you can talk to your family about the things you did wrong, about the losses and gains, about the failures and successes. Those are the way that we actually learn how to be human. The Hasidic group says, don't be in duress. Don't sit and try. Do the work of asking for forgiveness, of apologizing, and it makes the world stronger and better because of it. We also are here to do the work because you can't really do redemption or atonement without asking for forgiveness and an apology. I often hear people coming into the sanctuary it's every year, you know, I don't really like saying all those al hates. I don't really like it because I haven't done so many of them. I haven't done this. I haven't done that. And I think it's so funny because I hope this year we kind of lean into them. Instead of saying, I don't do this, let's look at understanding it a bit differently diving deep into its meaning. One of my favorites from the previous Moxor is confusing love with lust. If we keep that sin to the Harvey Weinstein, Cosby, or Louis C.K., then we're really not doing the work we should. 
Because if lust fundamentally is power, which it is, it's having power over somebody else, and love is actually seeing eye to eye and heart to heart with another person, sacrificing for another person's good, even when it puts you at a disadvantage, listening to the hurt you caused even when it makes you feel uncomfortable, that's love. I think we sometimes confuse the two. When we want to be right in an argument and win, that's lust. That's being powerful over. I've heard many people who've been married 50 years say to me, the best thing I ever learned in a marriage is that it's better to be happy than right. This Yom Kippur, let us identify with those three students on the train. Let's find the time that we have to return to the scene and apologize because we haven't treated somebody well or right. That we put our fun and desire in front of another human being. Let us return just as I hope they would return. When we apologize and do the hard work of introspection, when we go to another person and show our remorse, when we find a reconciliation that builds and heals, the world is healed, I believe. The world is that much stronger. If each one of us did that over these next 24 hours, think about what a beautiful community this would be. It would be one of strength. It would be one where our souls would soar, where our hearts would beat, where our hands will hold. And that's a community in a world I want to create and I want to be a part of. Gemarto. Our services continue tomorrow morning. At 8.15 we have, for the second year in a row, our new-ish creative sanctuary service that combines what we love from the sanctuary service with the best of the Tipti service. And then following the 11.45 service, we hope you will join Rabbi Zimmerman in conversation with Governor Tim Walls. And then we have our healing, our yisker, and our nefesh nila service that begins at 345 and ends with what I'm looking forward to, which is the blessings of all the new babies of the congregation. We now continue our service on page 116 with the Elenu. Please rise. Alenu le shabeach la don hakol la tet gedula le otzer bereshit shelo asano ki goye haratzot velo samanu ki mishpachot adama shelo samach el keinu kahem vekor alenu kehol hamonam. Vanachnu korehim, umishtachavim, umodim, lifne melech, malachi hamlochim, hakadosh baruchu. As we go out into this new year, we take with us those who have inspired us with their lives, but who are no longer with us. And so our thoughts turn now to loved ones whom death has taken from us in recent days, weeks, and months. Loving memory, we recall Curtis Nelson, Mark Rosen, Gabriel Lilienthal, Andrew Klein, Dr. Markle Carlin, Florence Ryan. Carol Garrison, Ann Oppenheimer, Florence Chu, Joyce Newman, William Vaughn, Dolores D. Siegel, 
Edie Ferber, Charles Sheldon Bland, Betty Frankel, David Aaron Rosenblum, Victor Brank, Dan King, Marshall Kiefer, Nicoletta Zanardi, Anna R. Cohen, Dinah Kossoff, Sanford Lipsky, and Paul Reinke. And we link their names to those whose yardside anniversaries are commemorated at this date on this service tonight. Adrian Helene Bank, the Barron family, Jean Bemmel, Rabbi Zev Jimmy, Jimmy Binder, Ron Burton, Sarah Borman, Rabbi Samuel N. Dinard, who served this congregation from 1901 to 1920, Herman Ellenby, Michael Feldman, Ann Fogel, John Gasway, the Gadali family, Cynthia Cunyon Ginsburg, James Golden, Mildred June Goodman, Jack Grinbaum, Benjamin Howard, Amy Kahn, Mr. Terry Kirsch, Paula Klein, Marjorie Graceman Klein, Sandra Cahotis Landa, Jay Levinson, Ray Cook Levine, Lillian M. Margolis, Arnold Moss, Isaac Newman, Esther Rich, Oscar Rich, Matan Rotem, Edmund R. Rubin, David Rubin, Dorothy Rubin, Margaret Marcus Soliterman, Bessie Schnitzer, Rosalind Shore, the Schultz family, Muriel Schwartz, Ralph Seed, Mordechai Shalom, Connie Singer, Esther Snyder, Isaac M. Springer, Arnold S. Stein, Marilyn and Marvin Sternberg, Paul Strauss, Nate Streitman, the Shimkovich family, Walter Touchfarber, Barbara Winnick, Milo Wood, and Samuel Yarosh. The memories of all of them are with us. Our grief and our sympathies are mingled as we stand as mourners or alongside mourners here and throughout the world. We join together on page 122 as a congregation with the mourners' Kaddish. Yit Kadal, Yit Kadash, Shemei Rabbah, Mi Alma Divra Chirute, Viam Lich Malchute, Bechai Chon, Viome Chon, Ubechaye de Ho Beit Israel, Bagala, Vizman Kari, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shemei Rabbah, Barach, Leolam, Lal Meomaya. Yit Barach, Vish Shabach, Vit Par, Vit Rumam, Vit Nase, Vit Hadar, Vit Alei, Vit Alal, Shmeid Kudusha, Brihu, Lei Lam, Birchata, Vishirata, Tushbachata, Venechemata, Daam Yuran, Biyama, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shlomo Rabbah, Mim Shemaya, V'chayim alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. O se shalom v'imromah. Hu ya'ase shalom. Alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'al kol Yoshvei Tevel v'imru. Amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and comfort all the bereaved among us
God keep you. Ya er Adonai panave lecha v'yechuneka. May God's light shine upon you and may God be gracious unto you. Isa Adonai panave lecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May God's light be upon you as we continue our journey on this Yom Kippur of Teshuva, asking for forgiveness and atonement, apologizing to those around us and to God as we ask for God's presence, for wholeness and peace. May it be God's will. <laughs>